with the creation of this new state church, the confounding fathers of this new religion, went all out to assure the success of their new enterprise. And what did they do? They set, us, they set about suppressing and destroying all other existing competition. And so off to Alexandria they went, where they skillfully interpolated what they wanted from the treasuries of that library. And what did they do? They copied the scrolls of Hesus from the Druids. They copied the story of Krishna from the Dravidian manuscript. Gerald Massey found hundreds of similarities between Jesus and Krishna. They copied the story of Orpheus from the Etruscans, the story of Mithras from the Persians, who we call Chris. They copied the story of Bel Minor from the Chaldeans. They copied the story of Iao, Iao, from the ancient EU people, from which the northern Caucasoid race called the Khazars plagiarized and renamed themselves Jews when their king converted in the seventh century. They copied the mythos of Jason and the Argonauts from the Greeks. They copied Jess, the Redeemer, from the Phoenicians, Tammuz, Bacchus, Dionysus, Hercules, but just as important as their plagiarization of Krishna. They outright stole the entire story of Heru from the Chemites. Heru, the Redeemer, Gerald Massey again found 137 similarities between Jesus and Horus. Each and every one of the above characters and more from different ages and time periods all were known as the Christ or the Christ or the Anointed One. With the creation of this new state church, they also copied the story of, uh, uh, of Hercules, which was set when Set and Horus came together. Horus rose and set in the West. Yes, my beloved Christian brothers and sisters, I'm talking to you now. They copied, interpolated, twisted, and outright distorted all of the ancient spiritual stories on record to use as the foundational premise of a special book they were preparing, their in-house manual, a book that was to become known in the Greek as the Helios Biblios, the Book of the Sun, more commonly known through its Protestant translator and editor, one Sir Francis Bacon, a.k.a. William Shakespeare, Edward de Vere, as the King Version, King James Version of your daily Bible or your Holy Bible or your Holy Babel. Now, to make... <laughs> To make their distortions of the African spiritual sciences less conspicuous and less recognizable to the more diligent inquiring minds, they made the Bible into an ingeniously well-crafted work of, listen carefully, fables factualized, allegories literalized, symbols personalized, drama historicized, and cosmic forces anthropomorphized. Let me say that again. This is all your Bible is. Fables factualized, allegories literalized, symbols personalized, drama historicized, and cosmic forces anthropomorphized. With skillful hands, the Roman scribes perpetuated monumental changes for the purpose of destroying any connection of the origins of their works and the origins of their saviors to the myths, allegories, fables, and symbols of our ancestors' spiritual sciences. Now listen carefully. Some of the most conspicuous changes made to the ancient tenets of African spirituality through the principles of unitary law were the S-U-N of the universe became the only begotten S-O-N of God. John 3 and 16. The 12 celestial gates, or metaphysically speaking, the cosmic grid of Earth's third density space-time consciousness zone called the 12 signs of the zodiac became the 12 apostles of their gospel Jesus. Three. <laughs> Got to. <laughs> I, I, I got to hurt some Christians up in here today. I'm sorry. Sometimes the truth cuts, you know, and, and, but it takes a little time to bleed. You may go home and all of a sudden you're starting to bleed. And what, what happened? Three. The Afro-Kemetic and Dravidian principles of the redemption of man through the reincarnational cycles were ordered removed from the spiritual literature of the Bible. No longer would redemption through cycles of physical rebirth where the soul undertook its own personal, deliberate, bio-spiritual effort to transcend, 
where the human mind would use its focus, intent, and attention to alchemically transmute the cellular molecular genetics of the atomic temple through the disciplined retention of the man's sperm seed and the disciplined retention or stopping of the monthly loss of vital blood essences and eggs by the woman. No longer would this eternal science of the ancient masters constitute the higher paths to personal redemption. No, no longer. Instead, redemption according to the Roman State Church, became a vicarious and literal blood sacrifice, a blood bathing, blood drinking, blood washing process where any criminal, be he murderer, child molester, lawyer, or political despot, could be cleansed of all their evil and sin and achieve unilateral forgiveness and absolution. The one condition for this ticket to paradise being that they only have to be washed in the blood, accept and believe in a personal savior, who was brutally murdered and then physically resurrected to save all our asses. <laughs> all of this done on your behalf, Mark 6 and 16, Revelation 1 and 5. Now forgive me for interjecting at this point, my beloved brothers and sisters, but if you were to look carefully and examine the underlying logic, listen carefully, the subtextual mindset behind a belief and doctrine, you just have to ask yourself logically, is it any wonder why black Afro-Americans, Negroes, niggers, the majority of which are Christians, in fact, all black descendants of the captivity haven't yet, yet received one red cent in reparation? It's simple. Let's connect the dots and see why. <clears throat> By black people, Negroes, Accepting the doctrine of vicarious atonement. Vicarious atonement means somebody else save your ass. <laughs> Just worship and believe and you will see the kingdom. Because God, Jesus got your back. By accepting the doctrine of vicarious atonement and accepting this belief structure as your own, you have not only denied the very existence of your ancient ancestors and your true our story, his story, you have in effect forgiven your oppressor of his debt to you. For by his acceptance of this personal savior, the oppressor's sins against you are forgiven. And since now you believe as he does, you and Jesus have forgiven him and therefore he don't owe you a damn thing. <laughs> now I want you to check the science. <laughs> 